All right. We want to uh, first pop of the day. Here we go. Ooh, that was a good one. Good pop. Mm. Good pop. Good hotel pop. hotel rendezvous from Revelry Brewery. A little Bavarian wheat. It's probably my favorite of the staple cans. That was that wouldn't be my selection if you sound the sounded the the dinger and yeah. had to pick a beer. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be hotel rendezvous. <laughs> sounded the dinger. All right. Well, to lead off the second round. With 2-1, we got Sandusky Niners on the clock here. He's You selected Josh Jacobs first. Of course. And uh, who are you going to lead off 2-1 with? Well, I got to stop. second. I got to stop the slide here at 2-1. The BPA, I, I believe, is A.J. Brown. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't have been available if you didn't take uh, <laughs> Hakeem Butler. Already taking shit for it. People really didn't like the Hakeem uh, Butler. You knew that was coming. I, I knew it You're was so coming. so dumb. I did debate with myself on A.J. Brown and Hakeem Butler at the, at the time. And then there were two more picks that went off the board, and they weren't A.J. Brown. So I'm not the only one that passed on A.J. Yeah. Brown. Pretty pretty self-explanatory pick here. I mean, I, yeah, we, I we mean, talked about him at the end of it. and We've got a, we've got a rookie breakdown also out there, and then there's an article on the FFDynasty.com by, uh, I think it's the M, the M. Bauer. Yeah. Let me click this link. A.J. Brown, the real deal. Uh, he kind of tries to hate on DK Metcalf, which I don't like, but it's okay. You can have your own opinion. Uh, yeah, the M Bauer eighty uh, five. So go M Bauer right on the Twitters. Go check that out. Uh, there's there's a lot to like about AJ Brown, and also some things not to like. He had some very productive seasons at Ole Miss. Uh, led the SEC in in touchdowns and receiving yards in seventeen. Upped his receptions and yards in eighteen. Less touchdowns, but overall very respectable numbers. But the college dominator and breakout age are only in the 59th percentile, so I'm not sure he can be good. Yeah, how could you? Uh, tons of catches, but 14 drops, ranked 62nd in drop rate. A, a typical thing for a lot of these lot receivers of these. coming out. Yep. Uh, but a really big physical guy. He's pretty smooth. 7.6 yards after catch it's per completion. Big slot. Right? And that's the thing, right? Is is I, I pin him as a, as a slot receiver. But he only had 59 of his 85 catches from the slot in 18, so he's definitely playing outside some. I didn't see a ton of it on the tape that is available to watch, but he, he obviously was. Like The big question is, can he win on the outside yeah. in the NFL? Because, I mean, they just paid slot man extraordinaire Adam Humphreys <laughs> $19 million guaranteed to right. play the slot. That's not a cheap, That's not a small number. It's not like uh, we can just bench this guy kind of number to, mm -hmm. to put this guy in. So I, I would imagine they plan on him playing yeah. some outside and this is why aj brown is still available at 2-1 and, and a good pick and we said right you know it's dynasty and things will change they don't have a quarterback signed through 2020 i don't think on the roster and you know adam humphreys will still be around but you know we, we could get a little humphreys outside aj brown inside kind of being able to switch places with each other a little bit i worry about aj brown outside i didn't love him playing outside i didn't think he was great at uh at getting open out there but right it's not the worst he's got the size and 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 he's got some good moves but definitely i think he definitely is better in the slot i think i like him off the line of scrimmage i like his play speed I, I like his footwork he's good along the sideline he's got the toe drag working he's pretty savvy versus his zone Get, he floats to the open spot i just he's not like a master separator and he doesn't have he did run a 449 but i I don't think he was that fast on the field. Like I don't, I don't think he's like the big play waiting to happen, which is my opinion. Hakeem Butler is, and that's kind of one of the deciding factors that that made me take Hakeem over this guy. But among other things, but I mean, at two one, what can you do? Like this, this guy's yeah. got a pretty good team. He's got carry on. He's got Christian McCaffrey. He's got Joe Mixon. He's got T Y. Um, and so let's see who Robbie Anderson. Am I missing some good guy? He's got here? Amari, Cortland, Amari Cooper. So you throw a really good guy onto his team. We, you know, we, in this league that we're drafting for, we took our home league and chopped it up and split up the teams, and we're picking for everybody. The guy who has the first overall pick won the right to get first overall by winning the losers bowl. So he has a better team than right. a typical picking first squad does. Right, right. And so you can take AJ Brown and throw him on here and put him on the practice squad and just wait it out and see if either yeah. Mariota fulfills his potential or they move on from him and get somebody else. It's yeah. dynasty, so you got some time. Yeah, for sure. And he's got he's got a little bit of time to bide with his receivers. He does have like a Larry Fitz in there who could give him some starts. He's got Pettis down there on the IR or the taxi squad. He could have used the tight end probably the most on this draft, but the you know, 
probably not going to reach up for Irv or Jace here necessarily. Um, but I think A.J. Brown is, is a no-brainer right here. Agreed. Well, let's keep this thing moving. Let's get to 2-2. Two, two. Kamish is taking the stage. He's definitely a little bit more lackadaisical today than on the last couple. Uh, <laughs> he rang the dinger. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a couple of pops. Who knows? Uh, speaking of pops. So we got Corey up for this pick, picking for ooh crispy Oakleys. Uh, yeah. Some yep. sort of inside joke name that we're not his, privy his, to. His name is Chris. I don't I don't know what with I don't know. Hmm. Bad name. True. Chris with a K, I think. So that might have something to do with it. Maybe Oakley's um, he wears those as I sunglasses. think he wears Oakley's all the mm-hmm. time, possibly. Um Just I put- did at, at pick one two, we went to kill Harry here on this team. He Wait, has you went uh that's right. He's <laughs> he's got uh, Robert Woods, and that's pretty much it. We Casey reminded me at one two that he had Marquise Lee down there, so don't forget about that. But he's uh he needed a wide receiver help, and he needed it badly. Um, and we just doubled down here, and you know just kind of bring it back around. Um, and I went Andy Isabella. Um, that's for me is a decent shot. I think Isabella. I think. I think most people would probably agree at two two that might be a, a little bit early, um, but I this guy's got like I said, Chris Bioko is here. He's got decent running backs, and if he can get something out of Robert Woods is going to be stable. If he can get anything out of Nikhil Harry, he could probably turn from you know a contender, um, you, you know, turn to a contender and maybe potentially sneak into the playoffs. It's a, it's a spread out league. There's not a four or five guys that's just going to beat you up every week, keep you out of the yeah. playoffs. So he's got a chance. It makes yeah, him lose Gronk, which hurt, but he does have Jared Cook. So that's a nice little replacement Tr- there. <laughs> Very true. And, T- uh, terrible shot to the groin with losing Gronk. Missed Le'Veon all, all year last year. Exactly. So got a little consolation prize getting to this fought, fought and got the second pick overall. So. Sure. So I was, I was putting those types of things together to say, Hey, I'm, I'm going Isabella here. I think that a good case could have been made if you're looking at wide receiver for J.J. Whiteside, you know, over there in uh, Philly. Um, I just felt like there's a shot with, you know, a lot of people are speculating on what's going to happen in the Arizona offense, but uh, pretty much the only thing that's guaranteed is volume. And if things, if the wheels fall off like it did yet last year and it was just pretty much one of the worst offenses in history, then the only thing that is a guarantee there is less volume because you're three and outs mm-hmm. all the time. Um, so it, I'm not saying there's not going to be a lot of three and outs, but it's going to be a completely different attempt at offenses than what they had last year. Right. And so everything that Cliff Kingsbury in this spread out offense has ever been is just attempts, attempts, attempts. So I I yeah. put Isabella there. I could easily have taken Whiteside or easily if even you know squeezed in another player or two but I feel like Andy Isabella has a chance to get out yeah. there and get some targets and and be something for you sooner than later. Isabella gives gives I I feel comfortable taking Isabella you know wherever you need be you might like uh Whiteside a little better or maybe somebody likes Hollywood a little more or I um, mean you know go down the line of other players but if you need PPR contributions right away on a you know in this team can could could stand to get PPR That's contributions what I mean. right away. It, a- Isabella, you know, is a guy who is on paper probably in a decent situation to to get some <clears throat> balls immediately. You know, you are going to see volume, especially from those slot receivers out of this offense. That's if we go back historically and look at what's going on with the Kingsbury offense. It likes to go quick to those slot receivers and they'll probably be two. And I don't know how Kirk and Larry and Isabella are all going to work in there together. Sure. Um, and we could be wrong. It could be, you know, with taking JJ, you might have to wait and maybe you're waiting for Isabella for another year. Well, just- I think that one of the things that make that makes this process that we're doing kind of cool for that, I, I think is cool because when we, putting the backbone of our league here it gives you this this reason to say okay i can see where you can make a choice you're sitting there on the clock two two who i need wide receiver help but i got Le'Veon bell yeah. i got jared cook i got guys that are yeah. not exactly you got damian williams who could be just could have a nice season this year but could be all exactly time, i you know? could i could all of us i could be a cinderella championship team right and and i think what Looking back on it in three years, should I should I have taken Whiteside? Maybe, and maybe Marquise Brown gets away from a run heavy attack, maybe, and he's the best wide receiver in this class. Who knows? But for the next two or three years, 
even this year coming in, this this the way we've got this thing broken down, Crispy Oakley's I'm he's taking yeah. a shot here in my mind for that me picking for him. He's taking a shot on Isabella Bay maybe being and again we've said this but before, this is a league where you have to have a lot of starters. And, you know, you can't just get by with two guys every week as a wide receiver unless you got five running backs or tight ends to plug in, you know. Yeah. So give him another guy. To, and you not, not a lot of times do you actually find rookie wide receivers to be in your starting lineup. I mean, if you're playing a best ball and you get lucky and they blow up, but then they, a lot of times they're on your bench, they blew right. up, you plug them in the next week, they do nothing because they're rookies. Right. You know, so none of these guys are guaranteed production every week. But like you said, the quick hits, the slot production out of the offense – Indy Isabella is my pick. It could be, could end up just being Larry and Kirk for most of the season. Absolutely. Those roles, and maybe you have to wait, but I, I like it's a decent stab. I'm pretty sure our Sega Whiteside is going to be waiting a minute before he gets any series, before you're going to want to see him in your lineup. So I think, uh, that, I think you're that right. was I think part Isabella's, of the logic there. And then a little quicker to, that, to maybe get you some. In addition to that logic, too, I feel like Kirk is a really good, well rounded wide receiver who obviously thrives in the slot. But can but could move do a little, could could do a little bit of everything, and if they need the talent yeah. to squeeze the talent on the field and get the best possible catch pass catchers of yeah. the Cardinals offense, maybe Kirk moves outside a little bit more often than we would have thought, and Isabella's out there just just to get him on the field at the yeah. same time. Well, I mean, fast guy. I'm sure Isabella's going to get on the field. He's he's a chess piece that you can move all over. I mean, mm -hmm. you see him lined up in the backfield sometimes at UMass. He he's actually came to UMass as a running back, so you you got to like that. I mean, sure. And you talked about him on paper. Uh, he looks great on paper. I mean, he's like the metric dream. You could nickname him that. Like, he's got the, the college dominator in the 97 percentile. Breakout age only in the 71 percentile, but still pretty good. Then he ran a 4-3-1 at the Combine. Then right. the Cardinals traded Josh Rosen for him, basically. Right, drafted right. him at the end of the second round. Uh, he's really fun to watch. He was crushing out there for UMass. Tons of long TDs. Had a 300-yard game receiving, which is unheard of. Uh some fun comps, right? T.Y. And, and Brandon Cooks. But my favorite comp was Dash from The Incredibles. That's mm. probably the strongest comp I've, I've heard out there. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. If you're going to be comp to someone, might as well be Dash <laughs> from The Incredibles. Uh, so, I mean, he flies off the line of scrimmage. He's fearless over the middle. The problem is he's got suspect hands and he's small. And so, you know, 20 drops over the course of his career. But only ranked 61st in drop rate according to PFF in 18. So, right there on par with everybody else. Um, it, if you read about him, though, it's like common knowledge. He has terrible hands, but they're probably not that bad. Uh, but if he does get pressed and jammed, it's, it's hard for the little guy to get off of that. So he's got some learning to do, but you can put him in motion. You can line him up in the backfield. You can move him all over. He should probably get some, some PPR yeah. run here. Yeah, you don't get jammed in the slot, which eventually right. will probably be mostly his home. Agreed. All right, well, let's keep this thing rolling. With the third pick in the second round of the FF Dynasty's 2019 rookie mock it up before you fuck it up draft, Casey Myers is picking for team practice. We're talking about practice. It's terrible. And this guy needs to take it to practice, and <laughs> he should have mocked it up before he fucked it up, and he just fucked this whole team all up. He does have Deshaun Watson, this though. This thing, he has Deshaun. <laughs> he's got Deshaun Watson, he's got Leonard Fournette, and he's got A.J. Green. So... Mm. Yeah, and then and just a bunch of old guys. I mean, he's got Jimmy Graham and Greg Olson. He's got Chris Hogan, D. Jax, uh, MVS, which is a fun possibility. Sure, but sure. you know, and he does have Lamar Miller, who everyone loves to hate. But uh, love some more Lamar Miller. Probably going to get another decent run at, at being decently average this year. <laughs> uh, but probably Give him an offensive line, probably startable. And he does have a nice offensive line this year. At least they're hoping so. So. Uh, with a pick 2-3, I'm going to take Devin Singletary here. I took David Montgomery in the first round for him. If I'm rebuilding a team and trying to bolster things up, what I'm doing immediately is trying to revamp my running backs. Um, Why I, wouldn't you? I did, uh, <laughs> I did debate a little bit between J.J. Arcega, Whiteside, and Singletary. Um, Hollywood Brown a little bit in the mix, but I thought that was maybe a little too aggressive for this team. Um, he needs somebody that I'm a little bit more uh, sure about moving forward and with Devin Singletary and JJ our cycle white side wasn't sure if you were going to get a ton of startability right off the rip I do think if you really needed Singletary this year you might be able to plug him in especially with the talks of Shady potentially getting cut and them saving some money by getting rid of Shady um, but Singletary good player out of Florida Atlantic 5'7 um, 
203. You would like to see a guy like this catch a couple more balls. Wasn't really in, in the repertoire of, of what was going on over there. Um, but outside of that, as far as being an actual running back, the guy was really solid. Nickname Motor. Yep. Always like that. Uh, he Strong nickname. He uh, is right up there with um, David Montgomery, who I selected in this for him in the first round with, you know, David Montgomery had 256 attempts and 99 uh, missed tackles forced. Uh, David Singletary. Devin. Or Devin Singletary had uh, 264 attempts and had 96 uh, missed tackles forced. Nobody else is really even close to those two guys, especially like on the volume that they had is is incredible. Um, they're, you're at like 48 and 32, and there's a couple of 50s in there with – so nobody's even close to doing what these guys were doing. Um, super shifty player. Uh, didn't test well. Really, really killed his Yeah, like his DK, pizzazz. why did he run the three-cone drill? You know, why are you Who, doing Singletary? that? Singletary? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If, if You know you're bad at it. Don't do it. You right. force all these missed tackles. What more do you need to prove? Completely right. agree. He's he's nasty in a phone booth. I For can sure. tell you that. You're not tackling him. He's, yeah. He's, you're not going to get him. Um, <laughs> you're not going to get him. <laughs> But I, I thought he was a, a pretty good player. I, I didn't love him, but I, I definitely didn't hate him. And, and right at this spot right here, I'm, I'm interested in Singletary. I think the landing spot was was pretty decent for him. Agreed. Um, the Bills are in their second or th- second or third year with, with McDermott over there. I'm not 100% sure. But to me, it seems like what's happening is they're kind of building a little bit of a Panther squad. They're going to have a defense. Uh, last year they they let they Cordy Glenn walk out the door, Jordan Mills walked out the at the door, and uh, Ryan Groy I think or s- something along those lines. All three of those guys left. They brought in a bunch of other uh, really good players, uh, so they're revamping that offensive line. They brought in Mitch Morse from the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. He's like the sixth overall center. They drafted. They brought in Quentin Spain from the. Uh, Titans, who had a down year last year, but had some really good years as, as, a, as a physical player. Um, Deion Dawkins is a draft pick of theirs. who's going to be their left tackle from a few years ago. Who's coming into his own and they just got drafted a, or uh, they drafted a high second round who some people thought was the best offensive lineman in the, in the uh, draft with Billy Price. Um, and then they have a ton of, of good depth on that line they brought in spencer long uh they brought in russell bodine who could also play center Bl- bunch of versatile players they brought in i'm not a hundred percent sure how to pronounce his name but he was part of the uh, redskins offensive line last year ty niski niski not 100 percent sure but a, a pretty decent player so they got depth volume and and some good players trying to build a new offensive line they got a white cam newton back there this kind of Panthers light over here, and I like Devin Singletary coming into this offense. Even if McCoy stays, his days are numbered, and then you have a guy like TJ Yeldon, who I'm not upset about, but definitely isn't the guy who's going to carry the mail for you. And Frank Gore is old as dirt, but you know I'm not disrespecting Frank; that's my guy. <laughs> but eventually, you know the inconvenient truth is Frank Gore has to retire. Right. Um, Age is gonna catch up. So I, I I like Singletary. I don't think he'll he's gonna be a workhorse for anybody. I think he will be splitting duties, but him and Yeldon together could be I don't know if he'll end up being the guy, but you know what I'm saying. Like a nice combo platter of players. I think I think he can handle a decent load. He showed it in college. Um he's like he's not gonna break off a ton of big runs, but he is very hard to bring down. Um and I, I like the uh like the idea of Devin Singletary for rebuilding this team moving into next year. Maybe I should have taken Whiteside, but I couldn't. I couldn't shake Singletary. So, yeah, we did a a, a breakdown of Devin Singletary, but you can only find that on Patreon. Uh, so go check that out at uh, Patreon slash EFF Dynasty. Um, but basically, you know, we we like we liked him overall. He he uh, runs with good anticipation. He and pre- you knew he wasn't gonna be a burner on the on the testing no i mean you know he wasn't going to have a fast 40 i was surprised with the three cone drill yeah because he seems so agile uh he doesn't take big hits for being a a small guy he doesn't ever let defenders get squared up on him good contact balance can string a bunch of moves together to make a highlight play without having to be ridiculously athletic so i liked him the combine took him down and then the draft spot landing spot brought him back up and it was decent decent draft capital in terms of this year's running backs go so yeah it's not a bad pick here at all i mean there's just not a lot of running backs to take stabs on here in, in this draft at all and and you can get this guy in the second round and and it could pay dividends for you so i'm i'm in 
Well, that's exactly it for my. I, the, there's not a lot of running backs to choose from. I mean, basically, you were looking at Singletary or Damian Harris, and then you got to check out for a while. Um, I, I, you know, Justice Hill, and then you get straight back up Benny Snell, who could be great if, with an injury. Um, I, th- I think maybe in a complete rebuild, unfortunately, our guy practice here is might find himself in a complete i don't know if there's re, i don't think you're rebuilding i think you're just building you yeah know? he's i don't he didn't have anything to rebuild too he just a just a kind of maybe got a little out in front of his skis buying up greg olson and jimmy graham in a tight end premium league probably just got a little crazy there and uh not that there's anything wrong with that but buying both of those older cats you know obviously if Olsen would have called another 95 balls last year it wouldn't look so bad but he blew his foot off early kind of thing yeah um and i, I mean he probably spent some money on aj green and probably spent some money on fournette because running and backs Deshaun, were going for and, and, and premiums you know, he did exactly and deshaun watson so yeah i get it i think maybe in the complete rebuild here if i'm this guy i'm probably trying to sail a aj green after a couple games of awesomeness and i probably would rather have white side long term but i see i like what you guys both said about singletary i one of the things that you know kind of gets me going for the bills in general is what gets we people go what, what we saw out of josh allen down the stretch last year and if you got a, a threatening quarterback like that just obviously what cam was able to do for the running game in his career if josh allen does the same thing for the running game in his career singletary could be what vulture a bunch of touchdowns well other than that part <laughs> yes other than that part <laughs> yeah. but he's not you know vulturing what as many goal line touchdowns right. as cam that's right for sure. you know what i'm saying about yeah. just opening up for the for Absolutely. the running back but if, if if singletary can grab that job and hold it for two or three years this could be a great pick i just wonder about if Shady does stay around and if Frank Gore does stay around, like Casey That's hit just on one Casey, year, Casey hit on it. He might not be, but uh, yeah, he might not be able to start this year for your team. But you know, and it, I say it all the time: you can be third on the depth chart for a running back, and you could be the starter by week two. You know, it 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 could happen quickly. And then yes, yeah, Shady could get cut, and Frank Gore could say, you know what, I want to go watch my son play college football, so I'm out. I mean, I think you'll get a year of Frank Gore regardless, but Shady's a real possibility of not being there, so. Yeah, and, and doesn't always play 16 games either, so yeah, true. neither does Yeldon. So anything could happen. Let's, uh, let's get to pick 2-4. All right, with pick 2-4 in the 2019 FF Dynasty Mock It Up, before you fuck it up, we got RVA kickers, and at 1-4, he selected Miles Sanders. So Pretty much got a back to. on there already. Had, had to go Miles Sanders at 1-4. This is my pick. I'm yep. going JJ. Got to stop this slide. That's, JJ Arcega Whiteside. That was your acronym. Uh, do you have? <laughs> I didn't make that up. That's that's a thing. JJ. JJ. Mm-hmm. I don't love it. I hate it. <laughs> I'm just call, I'm just calling him JJ Whiteside. That shit's. I whack. feel good about that. Well, it's not as bad as uh, the team name that I'm picking for here. The Richmond Virginia Kickers. Mm. Terrible team name. Yeah, lack of creativity with the names here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So he's got a lot of quarterbacks, which is which is silly because it's a one quarterback league, <laughs> and he's got uh, Cook and Chubb and Duke Johnson and a little JJ and Jared McKinnon hanging Dalvin. around, hanging around. I said Cook. And uh, let's see what what does he got for wide receivers? Not much. Julio, which makes up for some. Kiki, that's a fun little prospect. And then it's Geronimo. John Brown, Cole Beasley. We're all in on some Geronimo as being a nice piece for a contender this year. Flex yeah. starter Geronimo. Not not bad. Uh, so so I, I'm basically taking JJ here as the best player available on my board. JJ Arcega Whiteside. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's a bit of a perplexing character. People are kind of all over the place on this guy. Some people love him. Some people hate him. Uh, he didn't take part in the combine, which originally thought that there wasn't anything out there to find of why he didn't do it. And I was like, maybe he just said, you know, screw the combine. I'm not doing it, which I, I really like that. But I did just read that he had foot surgery after the 18th season, which is why he wasn't able to do the drills. He's too busy playing basketball. Uh, well, was both of his parents were uh, professional basketball players in Spain. Um, but he did end up running a 4-4-8 at his pro day. So take that for what it's worth. 4-4-8 and a 4-5. So. Uh, there's some minor injury concerns. Missed three games in 18 due to ins- undisclosed reasons. I hate that. And then suffered an ankle injury in 18 versus Washington. Missed the next two weeks. 
Uh, but I, I think there's a lot to like about this guy. Obviously, I just took him. Um, I want to read a quote for, for, to you from Roto World that I found very notable because usually those guys are staunch assholes with the hate in their hearts and they let it out. But there was some positivity here. They had something nice to say for once, so I, ha- I, ha- I got to give it to you here. There are few, if any, college receivers with the physicality and unique high-pointing ability that our Sega Whiteside shows nearly every game. And there it is. He's a high pointer extraordinary. I already, I already drank. I, saw, I heard you over there drinking. Anytime you say high point. Got a drink. <laughs> that was a big one. Looked like it hurt. I got to burp a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, that's basically this guy's strong suit here is is, is the high pointing. Uh, PFF charted him with the highest contested catch rate. He had 14 touchdowns in 12 games in 2018, seven of which were in the red zone. I think he makes really good adjustments to the balls when it's in the air. He's good off the line of scrimmage. He ran a decent variety of routes at all different levels of the field. He's got a good shoulder lean. He can get inside and outside of defenders. And to cap all this off, the dominator is in the 86th percentile. And the breakout age is the 74th percentile. Whoa. So he's definitely going to be good. Uh, And then you think about the situation. He got drafted to Eagles, and, and obviously they have a good offense and a good quarterback, but it's a little crowded. And so you might have to wait a little while. Both Alshon and Deshaun Jackson are probably going to be in Philly next year based on the amount of dead cap it would require to cut them. Uh, But either one of them could be gone, or both of them, in 2021. Nelson Aguilar is probably out of there after this year. They picked up his fifth-year option, but they got him. Uh, So this is probably more of a long-term play, and you're going to have to wait a little bit. But it's not unheard of that any of those... and Goddard, so... And but any of those, all three of those Target wide eaters. receivers have been hurt throughout their career, so it's yeah. not. It, it, he could find himself on oh, the for field. Sure. Uh, this is Alshon Jeffries' replacement, in my opinion. That's right. what this is, and as far as I see, what's going on with the Eagles? Like, pretty pretty similar style of play. Like, not going to beat you necessarily by their crazy route running and their crazy athletic ability. Although JJ's is 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 half decent. I think what you're paying for is the the basketball type box, box out, out kind of be able to out physical you and you're getting a little plus athlete on top of that with JJ. Yeah, those mitts. If the ball gets close, yeah. he's vice gripping it and it's his ball. Right. And so I, I, I like the I like the pick for the Eagles and you know when the Eagles are picking people, you gotta be uh paying attention to it a little bit. They've been pretty solid at picking these uh picking dr- uh draft picks as of as of late. Um, and it's always sure. interesting, good front office. So you're always a little bit more intrigued, at least the public seems to be, when the Eagles are making moves. Um, I didn't love Arcega Whiteside. It, I, not that I dislike him, but he wasn't like some people had him really high up there. And I, I, I'm I, down with this range with, with Arcega Whiteside. So, yeah, like I said, I could have picked him last pick. I think this is a is a really good pick. I think he's going to be a really strong red zone. He's a, he's a kind of rebound like player in my opinion with some athletic upside yeah absolutely shall we move to pick two five let's do it with the fifth pick in the ff dynasty 2019 rookie mock it up so that you do not fuck it up rookie draft casey myers on the clock for the hebrew hammers took dk metcalf at one five great pick who you got at two five case well you know, the first. Uh, All righty then. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. I got then. his team pulled up. If pulled that's up. what you're looking for. No, the first, the first pick, I, I took a home run cut on on DK, um, and the second pick, um, taking another one. I took another one, and I went, I went Hollywood Brown. Um, this guy's team can, in my opinion, seemingly afford to take a couple of swings and and live with it, especially on the receiver side of things. Um, he's he's got a good receiving core. He's got Galladay, Mike Evans, and Odell is just his monsters at the top of the game at the t- at the top of the uh, chart for him there. And then uh, Calvin Ridley kind of filling in a little bit. You got a little cheap John Ross in there. So some some pretty good players, Devontae Parker and Moncrief, who are guys who are always just seem to be hanging around, who could catch a little buzz here or there. But you add DK into this mix, and then you take another swing on Hollywood Brown. Um, there's not really, like you said, too many running backs to stab on at this point. I could have taken a look at Damian Harris, but um, and I, I've Singletary's obviously gone. So I, I swung on Hollywood Brown, the first receiver drafted in the actual NFL draft. 
Um, well, that means he's going to be the best. There's a, right. That's Astron Ross, who he has on his team. Um, <laughs> which I don't think he was the first receiver taken, but he a high wasn't. a high pick. He was a top um, ten guy though. But it's definitely a guy who doesn't have a problem separating and, and getting away, uh, Hollywood. Nah, but at 166 pounds with a foot injury, two red flags. There hasn't really been too many players in the NFL that have been very successful at 166 pounds. Then you put a Liz Frank on top of that. All a little, a little bit concerning. Um, well, they're saying he's dropped weight because he couldn't work out because he had a foot injury, right? He's yeah. supposed to be a little heavier than 166. I yeah. think he maybe like a couple pounds, right. but I mean, he was 130 pounds coming out of high school, and then he he had to go to JUCO because he had bad grades. He reported to JUCO at 144, and then has eventually worked himself up. So he's been gaining weight, but it's yeah. just it's it might not be enough. I don't know. Now you put him in in this system where he'll definitely have time to just as DK in in the system that he's in and I like that he's going to be the outside guy and good luck covering DK Metcalf for an extended period of time on plays where that we've already heard them talk about how they just do kind of have playground stuff built into what they're doing the Seahawks good luck trying to stay with uh DK for an allotted amount of time down the field and on top same thing with Hollywood Brown good luck with staying with Hollywood Brown with a guy like Lamar who can move around and create a longer amount of time where you have to cover right. similar to obviously it's not what Kyler Murray was always doing in college like he wasn't just creating time to create time but similar player who can move around now clearly not the other part of this equation is is Lamar Jackson's accuracy issues not Kyler Murray not Kyler Murray right. who was pinpoint accurate right. on the move and Lamar is you know a little bit Up hot and, and cold yeah. he walked into target and missed <laughs> That's the worst joke. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. That's a Mitch Hedberg joke. That's a great joke. <laughs> That's a Mitch Hedberg. Hmm. But uh, so there's rest in peace, Mitch Hedberg. There's definitely some some fun to taking Hollywood Brown. I'm I'm down with swinging at him at this point here. Um, I, I'm not going to really take him much higher. Um, and yeah. I, this was a, the swing swing for the fences for this team back to back on, on his draft picks. Well, I, the fact that you set it up like that when we we're doing this draft. Obviously, I was paying attention to the picks that I was making for my teams, but I didn't realize when you took Hollywood Brown, it was on the same team where you take a DK. And so when you when you when you look at it on paper like that, you're like, wow, those are two home run cuts. And like you said, the team can afford it. It's got a good team, and one of these guys hits. Yeah, you, you want. I mean, he needs a running back, but there really wasn't one to swing on. Agreed, agreed. And and like you said, I mean, Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, great pick. DK Metcalf. Great pick for this team. Both of these players, if one of them hits, it's just like it doesn't even matter. Right. And if both of them hits, it's kind of starting to not be fair. Yeah. And so it's two great picks for this team. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Because I, he doesn't need production out of really either one of these guys this year. Right. And that's what we were talking about with Andy Isabella, blah, blah, blah. You get Marquise Opposite Brown. Here here. Op, you don't need him. Yeah. And he's just a luxury pick. Yeah. It's definitely a luxury pick, but I, I really like Brown. I think I really like him. He's got like a, a third gear. He's, yeah, he's fast I don't, I don't dislike him. I feel like he just has a lot working against him. And Lamar Jackson could not be the guy for the entire time over there if it doesn't work out. It's it'll be fun to see it. Um, but you know, I would obviously like a little bit better of you know. We saw jo how John Brown, not obviously Hollywood Brown's probably a little even twitchier than John Brown. But John Brown was having a hell of a season, and Lamar ja and or Lamar Jackson and it fell off a cliff. Sure. Uh, so <laughs> similar of a player that you would kind of use. I get that. I think he definitely is a little twitchier, and I think he ran a, a variety of routes, and they look good running them, and, and he's, he's great at getting open. The vertical push allows him to get open on the comebacks and curls. He, he's got good stacking ability, and he keeps good position on underthrown balls. Oh, I mean, he's lightning fast. Through a so. lot of pass interference. He's got that late separation that we talk about. He wouldn't. We wouldn't be talking about him if he wasn't really fast at 160 or call it 72 or he, whatever you want. You know, give right. him a couple pounds. He also, right. give <laughs> a couple. he also killed it from the slot. Averaged 7.45 yards per route ran from the slot. The problem, though, and I don't know that you've mentioned it, is, is not only Lamar Jackson's accuracy, but this guy's hands aren't the best there's definitely some bad drops uh he had seven in each of the last two years ranked 109th in drop rate so a little worse than than the guys we've been talking to and then he also needs to secure the catch better there's several times you see the ball get knocked out of his hands on plays that would be yeah. touchdowns or, or catches if he did just secured it after the catch 
So everything from the hand size, arm length, wingspan is all very, very small percentiles. Right. And, and you so, see it out on the field. Like he's not a, a great blocker. He when he gets tackled, he's kind of flying around all over the place. So oh yeah, it, I mean, it definitely worries me about and, the longevity of this guy. Like him and Lamar Jackson could go out on the same play by the same <laughs> guy. Like, <laughs> well, not, maybe not the same guy, but I mean, a screen pass. It, it could, guy well, could yeah. really rock both. It could of be them a, like. a rollout deep pass, and <laughs> Lamar gets crushed. <laughs> You're and right. all Hollywood gets crushed. And it's all of a sudden yeah. it's RG three and Miles Boykin, which yeah, yeah. right. Well, you guys have mentioned the speed a couple of times. Obviously, if you watch anything about this guy, it's speed, speed, speed. Our boy, uh, old Matt Waldman over there. If you play any Dynasty for any time, you start to learn his name. He's been doing this for a long time now. Made a good name for himself. He t- he says he's never hurt seen. He's never charted a guy with the top end speed and the quickness combination. If when he figured, you know, hey. Top speed grade, quickness grade, put them together. He's like, I've never seen anybody that can do both like Marquise Brown. Um, and take that for what it's worth. He maybe, maybe there's plenty of guys that could have done it better, but his eyes said that, and he's watched a lot more of it than I have, especially this year. So, like, well, you, I mean, it it the, he the compares speed, a lot. Speed and quickness is there. He compares a lot to Didi, the, you know, the the <clears throat> similar wide receiver that played there at uh, Oklahoma. I mean, the stop and start ability is so abrupt. It's like hard to even keep your eyes on him sometimes and then baker mayfield said that he's even faster than dd westbrook who i think ran like a 442 so it's pretty pretty oh, elite mean, company there dude's but, no doubt about it but it's a fun fun Silly swing fast it's hollywood one, brown that's like his hometown florida hollywood it's not just like a oh, okay call me hollywood because i, I want to be like good yeah. west coast nice from that, Hol- yeah. antonio that. brown's cousin right it could have been this was this was the like the first receiver taken in the worst maybe fantasy landing spot and you those Combo two platter. those two oh. is a com- it's both oh. going in Injury different directions and size and going in landing spot was all working opposite against direct- him. Yeah, first yeah. wide receiver taken first round it's two pick. magnets and boys yeah. are just pushing each north other and, far north and north like yeah. south and south <laughs> just just going you're like oh this is great wait oh man marquise brown going to the ravens like it yeah. could be it it, it could be very, very pull your hair out to try to figure out when to put him in your sure. when I, to when to put him in your starting lineup for the next year or two. I will give Lamar Jackson some credit and I think he could take a step forward, maybe getting an offseason to himself, stop playing behind uh, you know, frowny face Joe Flacco and not getting any reps, all that good stuff, and then getting thrown into it like, all right, well let's we gotta change the system halfway through the year because Flacco's hurt and now you gotta get out there and play. But I think Lamar Jackson could take take a step forward. I hope he does. But it's still at the same time. This is they're, they're building their off. They paid a lot of money for Nick Boyle to be there to be able to block. I mean, Casey will tell you if they're if they're setting up a certain way, you don't expect them to. If they're if they're going to run the ball, and that's what's going to happen, they're right. not going to. Lamar There's, Jackson's not going to throw it five hundred. You'll be times. lucky to. I, I forget what it was, but I heard somebody talking about the uh, pass attempts for the Ravens last year and uh, eclipsing 30 once uh, Lamar Jackson was in there was almost unheard of. Yeah. And so that's probably like maybe you're seeing, you know, two to two to five, two to six passes Hollywood Brown's way a game, which right. is, you know, and maybe a guy that you're drafting that high, you're, you're, you want to probably see more volume than and that. And when he takes one to the house, it's going to be great. Oh, yeah. But when it's like two for 30, you're like, oh, I wish he wasn't in my lineup. So great best ball pick early in his career. Yeah. And long term, he's got all the talent to be the best wide receiver in this class. It just got with the maybe the worst offensive scheme for him to get volume. His, his quality could be great. Like you said, I mean, Comparing it to Russell Wilson, obviously long way to go for Lamar Jackson to be. Yeah, it's just Wilson on the playground, and but he extending play. Ability. Lamar could run around, yeah. and Marquise Brown could be coming Get across the field and doing his thing. It could be, it could be great, but it's just going to be a little dicey. All right, well, let's put a bow on Marquise Brown and the Baltimore Ravens, and let's move on to pick two six for your pleasure. Two six. With pick two six in the 2019 mock it up before you fuck it up. We got Cowboys butts drive me nuts on the clock. <laughs> and on the first selection, Big Co picked uh, Debo. Debo Samuel for this squad. And who will be your 2 6 selection here, sir? Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. I could, I feel like Kyler and or Damian Harris are the two kind of just crosshair targets. This is my team. So th- those are the guys that I'm looking for. Uh, and you to, do have Sony Michelle on go the ahead squad, and, and pick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got Sony, so Damian Harrison, and I, I quarterback. 
is uh, probably something that yeah. I should. Well, I, <laughs> something you should pay probably should, I should, should, should maybe like <laughs> get one. <laughs> well, I was I kind of joked around about it at one six that it wouldn't be a horrible pick to take Kyler Murray. We've seen the upside of what a quarterback that makes a splash can do. Maybe just obviously Patrick Mahomes ruined it for everybody, but for the dynasty value of like say what happened with Baker Mayfield last year, he was at you know maybe first round around pick. this spot. I maybe mean, I maybe think in the mock it up last year. It took him at like two seven. Right, or maybe like a first round pick if somebody gets a little antsy, but more than likely second round pick, and then he gets in, he makes a splash. And, you know, what? kudos to you two guys. You guys were like, Baker Mayfield's awesome. I didn't say he wasn't, but I, for fantasy purposes, I wanted Lamar Jackson. And, you know, I don't know that Baker Mayfield crushed any fantasy numbers, but all he did was he's just awesome, and his moxie makes people – he's a number two dynasty quarterback off the board right now, which I, I, I'm not paying that price. But, but if Kyler Murray comes out there and does similar things – With more legs. With way more legs – then you got this two six or, you know, again, it wouldn't surprise me I, in one of my drafts and somebody on Patreon posted that this happened in their draft too. They sold a first like one ten, and somebody traded in for Kyler Murray. I sold one ten in FFPC league and somebody traded it. I was wondering what they were giving, get going. Who, who are you coming to get to yeah. give up a twenty? Give me a first for next year for this pick. And it was Kyler Murray. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if he doesn't last in two six in any of your drafts. And even a one quarterback league, everybody listen to this. Wouldn't surprise you if he doesn't if he's not there two six. And sometimes you know, but here he is in this mock it up. Obviously it's a mock, but yeah, you know, there's a lot of fun players, you know, JJ and Singletary and Marquise Brown that we squeezed in front of him. Kyler could have went anywhere. Sure. But would it, and if you got a good team and you got a good quarterback, it's kinda hard to take Kyler unless you're like jumping right. on Ky- unless you're jumping on the bandwagon and, and you don't need one of those other players. This is a home league and typically, you know, in, in these drafts you can you can throw the ADP out because they're not ear yeah. to the ground listening to everything ever. They're making their own opinions and they're taking who they want. Now it is a one quarterback league and a lot of teams do have a decent quarterback, so that's in my favor here. Right. If Kyler's here at two six, I'm absolutely taking Kyler Murray at two six in the actual draft. Um I don't then, think he makes it. I really don't pr- I probably think it's, not. it's too much name value, the one one pick overall. People the, don't know what they're doing. What just, just happened with guy sure. who, what just happened with Baker Mayfield last year and his return value and and then Kyler Murray's legs. Yeah. And all you gotta do is watch that highlight of him running seventy five yards down the left sideline from right. that angle and it's like, Oh, I want him. Yeah. Well I, then I'll take Damian Harris. No, I hear I'm you. Good. I hear you. I'm just but, and that's the thing. I mean, obviously this whole second round so far has been guys I wouldn't mind having on my team. Right. You know, it's it's a good it's a good full second round pick you know second round of the rookie drafts but kyler is i have Derek carr and i have marcus mariota and i had alex who i both picked up off the waiver wire um alex smith was my quarterback but we know how that ended um so kyler's a great pick here at kyler six would for be your a great team. pick and i mean at one six i couldn't really argue too too much i wasn't gonna, gonna do it, it. no I'm you not gonna do you it. wouldn't do it at, you wouldn't do it at one six no but i couldn't if blame somebody you. wanted me to if i could get back to, to, to 210, 211, 112, I might consider it just because I don't not pat myself on the back. I don't have a ton of glaring holes. Right. So I could exactly I could afford to. Got a good balanced team, and if things don't happen the way you want them to at 1-6, you could trade back. Yeah, I could probably still get Hakeem Butler in the second round. There you go. And, things and are starting Damian to line Harris. Up. Things are starting to line up. Not in this draft, you can't get Hakeem <laughs> Butler in the second round. <laughs> well, I'm going to kill you before the draft starts. So, <laughs> All right. Yikes. Let's not Good start pick, this draft. <laughs> That's just tons of <laughs> tons and tons of value there with Kyler. Yeah, I can't knock it. I like it. I like Kyler. I like him way more than I ever like Lamar Jackson. So that's not really saying much, but eh. hater. I'm a little bit of a hater. You're definitely a hater. Of Lamar Jackson. Only because Big Co is so staunch about him. <laughs> and didn't want to ha- hear the Baker Mayfield argument. Told me I was dumb for taking Baker Mayfield. So that's why I, I like was because I told you were dumb for saying that Lamar Jackson couldn't score fantasy points as a quarterback. I mean, I didn't say that. I said he could score points as a running back. Mm-hmm. Exactly, but, but he plays at a quarterback position for now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we'll see. I, I'd still be selling Lamar Jackson if I had him high, high as you can get him right now. Before anything bad happens, you want to ring that dinger? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Well. Kyler Murray's off the board, so draft's over. Nope. Uh, pick 2-7 in the 2019 mock-it-up before you fuck it up is don't be last. Also a 
pretty poor name. Meant, meant to change it. <laughs> I was going to yeah. change it. Uh huh. <laughs> um, with one seven, you selected TJ Hawkinson, or Jay Wayne selected TJ Hawkinson for I Big did. Coast team. I did. With two seven, where are you going, Jay Wayne's? Well, I guess I'm going to go with a little combo platter of team need and uh, BPA? best player available. It just so happened to work out like that. Uh, we mentioned his name several times in the last couple picks. I'm going Damian Harris. Big Code does have James White, so I thought that was pretty much a no-brainer. I think if you have any Patriots running back, Damian Harris anywhere in the second round is is fine by me. All he else, he ha- he has David Johnson and Austin Eckler, and that's that's it. So he he needed a running back. I, I I'd be fine if you just need a running back and you want to take Damian Harris because there's nobody else available. I'm I'm totally fine with that too. There's going to be some games where he where he probably is just fine. He's going to have some startability, but it's kind of a bummer that he went to the Patriots because it's crowded there, and we know how they like to treat fantasy uh, players with their running backs. Uh, but I really really like Damian Harris pre-draft. Uh, I think he's he's a really good player. He's a guy that plays with power, but he's more than that. He's got a high motor. He can press the hole. Has good vision. The balance is there. I think there's some deceptive long build-up speed. Although the 40 wasn't great, there's a bunch of yards after contact, and I think he's definitely underrated in the passing game. There's a ton of games to watch uh, on YouTube, and I, I don't think I saw a single drop, although PFF did rank him 52nd in drop rate, so there must have been some in there. But he looked pretty good and fluid in the passing game. So, like I said, if you need a running back help or you have any Patriots running backs already, I'll pull the trigger on Damian Harris and not bat an eye. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I. If, if I was on the clock on the last pick, no Kyler, I would take Damian Harris. Kyler and Damian are there. I'm trying to pick uh, Kyler and trade in for for Harris. Uh, I really liked Harris. I liked Harris m- way more than Singletary in the pre-draft right. uh, process. Uh, I like the idea of maybe Singletary being able to get be the 1A in an offense. So I, I gave him the nod over Harris of probably being always being the 1B um, for the Sony. most part with, yeah. with, with Sony. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm down with the pick. I mean, he's got to go somewhere and I think he's a good player. So, right. He's a great co, pick. Big by co the could Patriots. use a running back, not a typical, uh, big co squad here with just a few running backs. Yeah. kind of got pitch and hold there. Uh, Happens. It was especially a, in the auction, you know, the auction was wild and crazy. I, uh, was at one of my really good friends wedding up in, uh, the, honestly, I was in, I was in Denver. Were we in Denver? We were somewhere. We were in Colorado. And I wasn't smoking, so it was not like I don't know where I was at. Like, I, I, I really have – we were in there somewhere. Vail. We were in Vail. And then we got for the – Not Denver. We, it was <laughs> not Denver. A couple hours away. Made that trip in a blizzard. It was horrible. That was a couple years ago, not this past trip when we did this startup. But then we got bust. They said you. They said no cell phones at the actual ceremony. And I thought that was just out of respect for the bride and groom. No, no, no. No, no cell phone service. No cell phones because we were like 20,000 more feet up Because you don't air. need these things. <laughs> they ain't going to work anyway. <laughs> yeah. Just so, a paperweight. It was, uh, it was, you had, there was two huge charter buses that drove you straight up this mountain. Scariest ride ever. And then it was like, literally, you got there at three in the afternoon. And then it was a full day of wedding. And then you come home. <laughs> like it. So I, I, I could have missed the full like somebody got nominated and fell off if they didn't get get <laughs> bit up and back and forth i missed i was without cell phone service for at least 14 hours straight and that was right in the first two days of this auction things were popping off running backs were going crazy and i mean honestly this was you know in an auction you're like all right what do i do here this is a home league i got plenty of leagues going on now so what am i doing and I was there was no chance I was coming out of this draft without Antonio Brown and Tyreek Hill because I didn't have any of those guys on any teams and I wanted to have fun with those two guys. And bad wanted, off season for you there. Oh, horrible off season for this team. <laughs> so yeah, not a typical running back. Just you know, stud. Not a not a typical stable that uh that I don't you know I'm I'm lacking. It, you I'm, like you I'm like the running backs. Here. I'm usually. a big running back guy and I don't have any. Um, what, do, what do we got at one eight here? So, anyways, one eight. One we eight. already we, did that. We we're jumping the ship, but here. we can wrap this up. No, this was one seven. One eight's next, isn't it? You mean yeah. two two eight? Sorry. Yeah. So, well, you know, you were like because you got to warp running backs. What happened? I, I wanted some. Yeah, you brought that upon yourself. Well, I, I just Damon said it Harris. wasn't a typical. The people on YouTube team. are not gonna like this. No, <laughs> they're gonna be like, oh man, get get to the fantasy. <laughs> 
Well, be sure to comment in the section below. <laughs> Hit subscribe. Well, understand what's happening in your life, fellas. If you're about to go up in 15,000 feet past being 6,000 feet already, you better know you don't have any uh, cell phones. No weddings in Vail during an auction startup draft. Exactly. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Let's go ahead and take a quick break before we get to 2 8. I think it's, is it 2 7? 2 8. 2 8. 2 8. Let's take a quick uh, beer break and we'll be back with more of the FF Dynasty for your pleasure. With the eighth pick of the second round, <laughs> the FF Dynasty's 2019 rookie, mock it up, don't fuck it up. Who's on the clock? Corey. Hurts so good. Hurst. So good. So good. Uh, let's Make see here. So okay. So Shout out to Ross. First round, my man Ross, I scooped you up. No offense. You're welcome. And doubling back around in the second round. And, you know, them boys gave me a hard time. Had to take two tight ends in a row. This is the world we live in. In the offseason. There's drafts. no way he actually meant to take. He didn't know who he took the first time. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so now he's going with it. <laughs> no, no, no. Here's what happens. I was, If you'll let me finish. <laughs> who did you take? Let me. Well, first, all right, I took Irv Smith. Irv Smith Jr. But if you go back and look at the dates and you follow the text message, this might this pick might have been at the absolute epitome, very tip top of the Kyle Rudolphs going out of Minnesota talk, and just that's the world we live in. And fantasy football is up and down, this and that. Now now it's a five year extension on the table, and they just offered him this two weeks ago. Last week it was he was I'm too young to take a pay cut. I'm going to be respected somewhere. Blah blah blah. Irv Smith's awesome. Rudolph's leaving. Uh, and and meanwhile, Casey and I are getting we've we'd already selected Irv Smith in a in a FFPC rookie draft, and two picks later, somebody's trying to swoop in. One of our patron members is trying to trade for Irv Smith and trying to take him from us. And so it's like, all right, well, this Irv Smith loves going crazy. Uh, I'm gonna grab Irv Smith here. And I mean, obviously, if Damian Harris would have been on the board, that would have been a fine pick. But he just fell off. That's what happens. And I've just. You know, if it's he, tight end premium, it's just tight in end case premium. You're, and, didn't listen to the last one, and you're listening to this one, right? And and he has Kyle Rudolph, but and he now he has Noah Fant, and I just stack up Irv Smith. He he, you know, he's got a couple of decent running backs, got a couple of okay wide receivers, and got Cam and Trubisky. And if you can figure out which one to plug those in each and every week, it's not a best ball. If you can, I mean, he he can make some noise. And uh, and Herb Smith is the kind of player right now. I mean, if Kyle Rudolph signs this extension, you know, maybe it's a big fat womp 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 again. But right now, when I made this pick, the arrow is screaming straight up, and you could potentially trade Herb Smith before your team ever plays a game with him on the roster. And that's what I was thinking when I picked up Herb Smith. Here it was a value pick. Could have gone Justice Hill looking for a running back, but obviously I believe Mark Ingram could do some work there, and it's a big-time running team, so maybe Justice Hill still gets tons of work. Um, but I feel like Irv Smith was a good pick at the time, and, I, and it's still a good pick. It's just, with you know, again, he's got Kyle Rudolph. Made a lot of sense to me when I made the pick. Yeah? Well, what do you think about uh, Irv Smith? I like Irv. Uh, I, th I, like the, I like that the public likes Irv, um, <laughs> so I, 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 I'm down with what you're saying, Big Co. I think I've, I think I'm giving the slight edge to the player that I like to Sternberger, um, but I, I'm down with Irv Smith, and you know, like you said, goes up and down. We don't know what's going to happen with Kyle and or Irv here, but Irv probably plays the position a little different than Kyle Rudolph. Um, I agree with that. And I think that what you just, and we don't want to get off on a Jay Sternberger tangent here, but I think Sternberger could be much, much more fa fantasy relevant a lot faster than Irv Smith with or without Rudolph because the Vikings have dominant receivers and the Packers really don't. They got Devontae Adams and a, maybe my boy Geronimo Allison's a flex starter. You know, I yeah. think, I and think there's nobody really in front of Sternberger there. At, well, Jimmy Graham, but he's a shell of himself, unfortunately. Fair. So yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying there. And I did go Irv again, the, the talk was going crazy. Irv Smith was the hot topic that week, and I could easily take Sternberger as well. I mean, I, I think Irv's a pretty good player. I, like I said, I'd give a slight advantage to Sternberger, I think, but I don't I don't hate taking Irv Smith in tight end premium. Yeah, it's a, it's a good swing. I mean, he was played really well, had, had a really good year. Uh, I mean, crushed, crushed downfield, was first in yards per route ran. Pretty fast guy. The three cone wasn't the best ever, but it's tight, it's end. tight end. Look, look good running routes, and 
and he was it could, open. It could really play into how they seemingly want to run their offense. They want to be a little bit more uh, run first, and you can put Diggs and Thielen out out there, and then you can put Kyle and uh, Irv Smith Jr. out there, and you can have a mismatch coming off the line of scrimmage with Irv Smith, who's a little bit more of a receiver uh, type of a player where you can – Kyle's maybe a little bit better in line and still a good – receiver but not doesn't move the way sure Irv moves and in that scenario if you're running that direction even though he might not be the best block and tight end ever he's still going to get a, probably a better block as a 240 pound man than a t- typical slot receiver yeah so i i, I can see that as a mismatch potential so i think too. i think it's a good schematic fit for them and you know tight ends typically take a little while to develop and I don't. I don't know if they're going to re-sign Kyle Rudolph to a five-year deal. I think that that might be just it's the offers on the table. Yeah, and it, but it, it could be that it's probably a cheap offer. Ex- I was just about to say that it could be a slap in the face offer. Yeah, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? It's uh, it seems it's like the Kyle's air, but... most likely out of there, but we'll see. Right. All right. Well, they let's... do have really good blocking tight ends on the roster as well. So if Kyle happened to go, they would kind of do the same thing that I'm talking about, maybe with a little upgrade at a, as a blocker. Uh, but not nearly as good of a player as Kyle Rudolph is all around. True. So, because Kyle Rudolph does not get the love he deserves. No, and that's for sure. <laughs> all right, with the ninth pick of the second round of the mock it up before you fuck it up rookie draft, presented by the FF Dynasty. Find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. Welcome Casey back. Myers. Who you got? <laughs> It's picking for Samaje Trois, the best team name of this league. That's my squad. That's up for debate, but whatever. Took Paris Campbell at one nine. Did Who you take, got at two nine? Did take Paris Campbell. Uh, well, you know, boards uh, boards drying up a little bit of of all the <laughs> picks that you're super excited about. Leaned on um, some Sternberger, and that's who I went with. Two nine, going Sternberger. Going Sternberger. Little little premium. Jeez. Uh, could have could have taken Justice Hill. Uh, could have thrown in there some Deontay Johnson, uh, but I'm gonna stick with Sternberger in the premium here. Uh, this is a who do you have on? Who, who's your? Uh, I got Austin Hooper. You got Hooper. That's who it is. I got. So Ian you got Thomas. Hooper and you got Ian Thomas, who I, I like as a prospect. Got Herndon. Um, and then Herndon down there, who now that Gase is in there, I like a whole lot less. Um, it's just. Hard to like any skill position player that Gase is coaching, <laughs> just, right? Just didn't love it. And then they, they drafted a tight end who is a pretty decent blocker. And so so we'll, we'll kind of see how that, that plays out. So you got you got a, a got couple, of, couple of stabs there, and, and we all like Hooper, and we, we really want Hooper to be a guy that we can lean on in, in fantasy, but I, I don't think he's quite there as, as the guy that you want to be uh 100% leaning on every week, week Whatever. in, week I out last on, year. in your uh tight end premium league. So I went ahead and I added another tight end to the mix here. Don't hate it. I put Sternberger in there. And obviously Jimmy Graham there. We talked a little bit about it on this last pick, but they didn't add any receivers. forgot about Jimmy Graham there for a second. (laughs) They didn't add any receivers over there. Um, And you're getting a whole new offense tailored uh, to a little bit more Aaron Rodgers and a little bit more of of the floor. Uh, So they're going to tag team this thing and it's, should be a little bit more fun and Aaron Rodgers should be a little bit more involved and more yeah. excited week in, week out to go out there and, and do what he wants to do. That's and, what you're looking for. Uh, Sternberger is a, is a piece of that moving forward, I hope. Um, this is definitely a stab, but again, it's premium, so you got to elevate the tight end a little bit. It's a, it's a tough position in general to, to find a week in, week out starter. And I, I really just I like the receiving ability of Sternberger. Is is he the best blocker? No. Is he a complete liability at blocking? No. No way. Um, I think he's he's half decent. He was Texas A and M's receiving offense uh, in this last year, which was pretty much his only productive college year. Uh, but he transferred from Kansas, and uh, he was there in fifteen and sixteen. And I think he had to sit out in seventeen, maybe. And then played 18, had 10 touchdowns, had the most receptions on the team. He was their leading receiver. He's just a just another receiver out there for Aaron Rodgers. That's going to be a mismatch for somebody. He um, looks like a wide receiver. Yeah, he's he's pretty silky smooth. He's got really solid hands. Um, yeah, so, made a ton of very difficult catches over the middle right before getting popped. Like yeah. very impressive. Uh, what what you able to see 
Only three drops last year, ranked 20th in drop rate. So there's a good number there, finally. Yeah, he, and he had way more targets than most tight ends. Right. Like He's up there getting like 80-some targets, and the rest of the tight ends are down in like, if you got a good year, if you had 30 or 40 catches. You 80, know? 82 targets. So right, that's, and, and that's one of the things that Casey was liking and talking to us about Sternberger in the middle of the football season, and normally it's till the end of the season or after before names really start popping around. And uh, Jay Sternberger was somebody that Casey was bringing up early and often. During well, when you the watch season. the Travion mm-hmm. tape, you hear Sternberger a lot. Yeah, it was their whole offense outside of Tra- Travion was their offense and Jace was their offense. So yeah. Right. Um, He's, he, I think he definitely looks fast out there, faster than his uh, yeah. 57% height-adjusted speed score. You necessarily know test very well, but, I mean, there's not <laughs> that many I mean? tight ends that go blow it out the water. <laughs> Um. So I like six four two fifty one. I'm in. Eight point two yards after the catch per completion. That's a that's a stronger number than most receivers that are going in this class. Right. So a lot if, of yak. If, if him and if him and uh, him and uh, a Rod Aaron Rodgers in there, and if him and a Rod can boom, develop boom. a little bit of chemistry, and that can be a guy that he he likes to find on the field, then you're in business here, and it's a home run uh, pick. Yeah, I think I like this. I think I like it more than Irv. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm definitely giving Jace a tick above Irv. All right. The public doesn't feel that way, which this is why I'm okay with taking Irv and maybe getting a little ah, bit more value back. I don't know what to do about what the public thinks. Well, so it's just it's Get good. Your own it's podcast, good when, then. Well, it's good when when the value is in your favor and it definitely in all the rookie drafts that I've been in, Sternberger is usually a, a good bit behind Irv Smith, meaning that mostly the public is yeah. definitely a little bit more into what Irv has going on. Well, he's an Alabama guy. Yeah, but I'm I'm going with my guy, Jace. All right, let's, uh, let's keep trucking along here. With pick 210 in the 2019 Mock It Up Before You Fuck It Up, we got Robbie Adams on the board with the first pick. Jason took Hakeem Butler and has been getting smashed on YouTube for it. <laughs> He's as, trash. As we said, he would. <laughs> I don't if, care. If I'll actually, pull down my underwear. If you actually listen to the thing without just looking at the, the name on the thing, we ex- explained that we knew you were going to get trashed and we like the guy and we're playing a game about a game, blah, blah, blah. Right. <laughs> 210, who you got? Well, I think this was the guy that I was angling for outside of Jace. And I was glad he didn't take him because then I could take him. I feel comfortable taking Justice Hill. Yeah. I think I think it's a good it's a good stab there. Well, I'm picking for Robbie Adams, which is Robbie Adams' team name. <laughs> Another terrible name for this this league that we're mocking. Yeah, this up. is gonna be a new rule that you gotta mock up your names before you put them out here. Yeah. <laughs> a rookie mock it up name draft. <laughs> uh but so he's got Saquon Barkley, and that's about it. Like I don't even know who he's playing in his second RB spot. Like I guess Adrian Peterson. Well, that's what he was getting away with last year, right? And so he just—I'll take any running back that's on the board at this point. But I mean, Justice Hill is pretty intriguing. Well, he's got the Tahoe Royce Freeman. He does have Royce Freeman, and maybe he gets maybe he gets some run this year. And if you're wondering why you're listening to us right now, it's because we told you to take a lot of guys ahead of Royce Freeman last year. <laughs> That's exactly why you're listening. I mean, we liked Royce, but we needed to make sure that all the other good running backs were gone first, for sure. Touche. Uh, so I, I like Justice Sill. He's a twitchy, explosive athlete, little small. Did weigh in at 198 at the Combine, came into college at 171, so he worked his way up to, to getting stronger. I like that. He's a bit he's, of a cutter. He's definitely a cutter. He likes to dance. Cut, he dances. The cut and the spin move. He dances a little bit too much, which is hard for me to say as a guy who loves to dance. Uh, <laughs> he spent the first part of his childhood dancing. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Still looking for that picture of Jay Wayne in a leotard. Oh, there's one. There's no one. picture of me in a leotard, okay? Sure there is. No. There's got to be one. We're about <laughs> there, to dig that thing. absolutely up. one. They're outfits. There's no leotards. <laughs> So if you got that class, that group photo, and Jay Wayne's in it from back when he was little wearing leotards, just go ahead and upload that thing to our Twitter. There's no the leotards. Sequence outfit. Sure, please. All right, look, on. there might have been sequins or something, <laughs> but it was the top piece. It wouldn't have been the bottom piece, which I think is a good Well, you can't be out there with no flair. Yeah. 
No, I mean you gotta you gotta sparkle. Uh, anyway, back to Justice Hill for the YouTube listeners. Good jazz hands. Uh, he's a tough guy, but he's not a grinder. Uh, he's got good contact balance. Contact balance for sure. Drink cuts on cuts on cuts. He's looks good like contact Edward, balance. Edward Scissorhands. Stronger lower half than you would think. I think. Yeah, I mean, leading he, to the contact balance. He bench. He, he uh, deadlifts a lot. Squat. Squats a lot too. Uh, <laughs> too. <laughs> he's a patient guy. I think he shows exhibits good patience behind the line of scrimmage, and uh, he's got a really good start and stop ability. So he's he's twitchy. He's an athlete. I think it plays well into what the Ravens want to do in in a, in a running back situation where he's going to be in the shotgun, having to start from zero. And uh, you know the the receiving ability is intriguing. It wasn't like off the charts. I don't think he's quite a finished product yet, but he did have thirty one balls caught in two thousand seventeen. I don't love the pass protection. Yeah, it's, which it's, there's a lot of olaying, a lot is, of whiffing. Yeah, and it's I don't I don't it's good it's good fit for him because he's not going to have to I don't think do too much pass protecting. Lamar can get out on his own. Yeah, but he is a hard worker. His coaches and teammates spoke very highly of him. So I mean, he's going to put in the effort. I, I, yeah. I feel comfortable about him not just relying on his athletic ability, which he obviously has. Just look at the combine. So. You know, you're late here in the second round and you're looking for some running back help or maybe yeah. you got Mark Ingram or, or you know, uh, Gus Edwards or well, sure. whatever. This is a solid swing to take and, and maybe he doesn't make it to 210 in most drafts. Uh, he, he's usually one of the, the later guys in the second round. Yeah. Um, I definitely, you and I, Jay, we both kind of had him further down the, the uh, running back list pre-draft uh, out of the top 10 for the most part. Um I do like where he landed, though. Much like Singletary, who right. probably wasn't outside of the top 10 for us. but Just about. Um, but the, the landing spot was good. It's a team that we know, at least for a year, maybe two, is going to have a plan to run the ball. And run he, the shit out he of He gives ball. them something that they didn't have. He's something different than all the other running backs that they have, which I really like, which I think gives them a spot on the field. Um, and you get the quickness of Lamar Jackson and the... You saw him be a great spark athlete at the combine, and he has some some good stuff on the field, uh, on tape. So I, I I like the landing spot. It definitely boosted him up a couple of spots for sure. me where where he ended up landing. I think this could be, you know, you got Ingram in there being being the main guy, and probably Justice Hill being the the one B. I think Justice Hill's going to get plenty of run, and we'll probably have some, you know. Uh, standalone starting value uh, throughout the season here. So right yeah. for a guy just screaming for some RB two help. Right, sure. exactly. And that's if you need a an RB two or that you know think. Not gotta, saying he's going to be a great RB two, right, but I think right. he can he's, fit he's, in there a little he, bit. This dude's screaming for it. Like and he has said, home run ability. Saquon and nobody else. He does have home run ability. Although not a ton of big gas plays though. In a big yeah. time running back heavy offense, and to double down on that you know what the ravens are going to do and yeah maybe lamar jackson's for could be frail if if squared up and hit correctly they got rg3 right there yeah they, they are literally saying this is our this is what we're going to do and we got a backup plan that could do the exact same thing yeah so like the 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 future of justice hill in the next two years in that offense we know how running backs get hurt he could be the one a after week three or you know it could be Oh boy, you know Mark Ingram could tough it out all year long, and our and Justice Hill could be barely flex starter at the end of the you know if you needed him. I think they're going to run it so much that they're going to need. I agree with that, and I think and 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 as much as I like Kenny D, but I think Justice just gives you a different dimension. Right. Well, Kenny D, I think is out there free agent land. He's talking to the Saints. Um. So I think they cut him. It must have because they. I heard something today that Kenny D was talking to the Saints, which would uh, be fantastic for his value going over to the saints um so anyway yeah i like the justice hill pick here for a team that desperately needs a running back um obviously uh you you still got our boy benny snails out there you could have been juggling those two guys back and forth but given the offense and the run heaviness the justice hill is going to be on the field um and could give you that rb2 plug-in when you're just stabbing for somebody that would be a better plug-in than like say the old school theo riddick yeah. type player yeah i agree not finding anything on. Uh, no, it says he could be on the move, but he's still under contract. Unless they, I didn't see that they cut him. So 
Kennedy, that is. Kennedy Dixon. All Rumor, right. Rumored to be. Oh, you know what? That, my bad. I screwed you guys up. That's Buck Allen. Buck mm. Allen talking to the Saints today. Javarius. My bad. My bad. Buck Allen talking to the Saints yep. today. That's an OG here at Married to the Game. Buck Allen's been getting run for years. Anytime Buck Allen's talking to a team that likes to throw it to the running backs, Big Co's signing him right up. Yeah. Kenny D, only 25, got another year left with the Ravens. Love Kenny D. All right. Anyway. Love Buck Allen, too. <laughs> Let's get to this next pick. With pick 211 in the 2019 FF Dynasties. Mock it up before you fuck it up. We got the Hershey Squirts and Ertz is the squirts part because he has Ertz. It's not spelled correctly. It's spelled like Zach Ertz. And he has got Ertz, so good for him. Good, yeah, he's good for you. He's squared away. With Cole uh, Hardman was your 1-1 one, one pick for him, or 1-11 pick for him, Big Co. I took Hardman at one eleven, and yeah, like you said, he's got Ertz, he's got Goddard, and he's got Vance McDonald, who I think could be sneaky good this year for the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers there. Sure. Um, I think I went. This is I missed an opportunity earlier when I was going off on my tangent about being in Colorado and the auction draft was going on, and I like running backs, and I ended up loading up on receivers because they were cheaper, and that's really where I found the best value in the draft. This team doesn't need necessarily a wide receiver. His strengths at tight end with Zach Ertz and a tight end premium and having Goddard. That's like your strength, obviously. But he's got Nick Foles and Carson Wentz. They were backups to each other, but uh, now Foles is his own self. He got his own starting gig. But he's got Curtis Samuel, Michael Thomas. He's got and, Javorius Allen. And Diggs. <laughs> he, does he now? <laughs> he does. I had to send out a flyer, <laughs> uh, uh, just a 17th round rookie pick to uh, get Buck Allen from him before this thing airs. Uh, he's got Stephon Diggs and Michael Thomas, absolute stud wide receivers. And he's got Curtis Samuel, Tyra Williams to throw a couple Love out there. Curtis. So he's got some depth at wide receiver along with some high end wide receiver value. He's got the high end tight end value. He needs running backs. He does. Kareem Hunt took a yeah, he's hit got, for him, but he'll got, be back. He's got Kareem Hunt. And, and Alex and, Collins. That's a bummer. Alex Collins just tanked Don't out. Don't roll on. around with a pound of weed in your car, Bubba. What the hell? <laughs> Get somebody You're getting else paid like decent around. money to play in the NFL. What yeah. an idiot. Don't do it. So Must I, have been some good-ass weed. He, this, dude needs, this dude needs a running back. And I wanted to take him Benny Snell, but... This is the thing where in the middle of the draft, you're on the clock and you're like, all right, well, I could take Benny Snell. He needs a running back. But if Connor stays healthy for a while, Benny Snell is just going to sit there probably and maybe not do a whole lot. And he got Jalen Samuels as their mix it in back. And we don't know what that Steelers running back feels going to look like if if uh, Connor stays healthy. And so I'm like, all right, well, I got him Deontay Johnson for the Steelers and that's a play on maybe somebody to get a value spike quicker than a backup running back you're waiting on injury for. Uh, I would love to have Benny Snell on this team, but I felt like with the the chance that you can strike it rich with another Steelers wide receiver, obviously Antonio Brown takes his 400 annual targets and goes west. See ya. So I'm like, all right, well, let's grab Deontay Johnson here and take a chance, you know, Maybe maybe he had, doesn't have the deepest wide receiver in the core of the league, but he's got top heavy, and then Curtis Samuel and gives you some depth there. Adam Humphreys could maybe catch a couple balls for him. Doesn't really, and he's, I picked him Hardman in the first. Throw Deontay Johnson on that wide receiver core. It needs a running back badly, but I just felt like let's get some other, let's get this other player who could who could strike it rich quicker. Now again, for the seventeenth time, even this episode, Connor goes down. Maybe Benny Snell's right in there in week two. You never yeah. know. But not knowing that, I think Deontay Johnson's going to get just as good a chance as maybe outside of a handful of those earlier wide receivers we talked about to get out there and, and play early and, and maybe, you know, in, a, in, a, in an open target situation and behind Juju. Again, Vance McDonald is, is it's, I say, is sneaky good, but he's not going out there demanding targets. Mm-hmm. You got Juju demanding targets and pretty much is wide open. Yeah. So, I mean,. You, I think you don't have Bell anymore. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, Deontay Johnson profiles is probably a slot receiver, um, not overly big, one hundred eighty three pounds, and not overly fast. Um, Four, te- five, didn't didn't test something. well, which I think a lot of people didn't enjoy. Um, Steelers so enjoyed it. It'll be yeah. So it's it's it, that when we talked about the Eagles, people being like, oh, you know, you're paying attention to the Eagles and kind of what their front office is up to. Well, you know. Obviously, they just the Steelers just took Juju Smith-Schuster and turned him into a 
big household name and they're comfortable letting Antonio Brown bully his way out of a contract and let Juju be the guy over there. So everyone's excited and Steelers drafting great wide receivers. All of a sudden, everyone just thinks they pull them because they drafted Antonio Brown a long time ago and they hit on Juju. Of course, they're the best wide receiver drafting class well, ever, Emmanuel which is good. Man, they which is good, they sure. Got, Mike they, Wallace was good. They yeah, drafted, sure. they drafted sure. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Service. Yeah, I said Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio. Oh, Emmanuel I mean, they, Sanders they, They've been pretty good at drafting him, but they've had, their, good. they've had fair share of misses. So it's not like Emmanuel Sanders was lighting shit up in Pittsburgh. Um, well, he was behind Mike Wallace and Antonio Brown. Yeah. But I, I don't I don't dislike taking Deontay Johnson. I'm I'm a little curious as to see where Juju plays and how Juju plays. It's I don't know where Antonio Brown was lining up most plays. I didn't go check it out, but I think Juju did some work from the slot and did yeah. a decent amount of work from the slot. And it seems like I don't I just don't know how I, I like James Washington a whole lot more than I like Deontay Johnson, especially playing outside. Oh yeah, me so too. So he gives you your outside player in my opinion and then um they do have Moncrief on the roster which we don't know how that's going to go I'm all for taking the swing on Deontay Johnson I'm, I'm not as excited about him as maybe some other people are I just don't know how it's going to play out I think it'll be interesting to see if Juju can actually take over and be the Antonio Brown and people are just anointing him already and it you know I think it's a little easier to operate when Antonio Brown's the guy outside no doubt. moving all around. No so doubt. I don't have any doubt that Juju's going to be a really good player. He's already shown me that he's a good player and, and a good seemingly human being. Um, it'll just be interesting to see this guy seemingly needs to play in the slot, and Juju, I think, did a lot of his damage out of the slot. Um, so we'll see whether Juju can take the Antonio Brown role and – how much Deontay Johnson is able to get on the field because I don't know how comfortable I am with him being an outside player. Their route running is basically what everyone loves about Deontay Johnson. That's all I've heard, uh, and I've watched some games, and it's it's pretty good, but I wasn't like it wasn't super exciting for me. But the Steelers liked it, and you guys pointed out all the players that he's that they've drafted. So good stab. Yeah, for no, I mean this late in the draft, what what are you gonna do? Yeah, I think it's a great play at this late in the draft, 100%. Right. So I'm I'm, I'm not going to read some that. people. I've seen Deontay Johnson be at the top half of the second and people reaching for him. So Yeah. I I think I'm good there. I I didn't know a ton about this guy before Big Co made this pick. Tried to watch some some tape on him and do some some research and there's nothing that's like, "Oh wow, about this guy he doesn't have any features or big playability." It's it's the route running, I guess, and it's it's hard to watch wide receiver tape if, if i could just see replays of of a close-up of that guy to actually watch what happens in the play it'd be a lot easier to to tell but it's 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 a grueling process to try and find the the, the good bits of tape to to actually see something worth seeing uh watching it i felt better about james washington you know i was like well, this guy's not going to come in and take this job from james washington i don't believe i i think james washington is a much better receiver than this guy so i'm made me a little bit more excited about James Washington but I mean I can't argue with the pick this late and and the Steelers know what they're doing when it comes to wide receivers and and they took him decently high so yeah I mean they got line of Swedes in there and and uh who was the guy that we were just talking about that was on the Chiefs and then he wasn't on the Chiefs Sammy Coates they got Sammy Coates's and Lima Swedes in there as well so they have misses at receiver sure uh, but a ton of good ones. Sure. As many good ones as any other team you could even think of it recently. And it's not even the good ones. It's the fact that they took the, the like you said, the Antonio Browns and those types of guys that nobody had ever heard of. It wasn't a bunch. They, they didn't take like three first rounders in a row and just have studs. The Lions tried that 10 years ago with the old Charles Johnsons and those types of guys. And none of those worked until mm -hmm. they got Calvin. Um, well, and it's just a, was a pretty bad franchise. It's a, pretty was? good franchise you know still is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough being a lions fan yeah. buddy it's toxic over they got bad boys can't even get good water <laughs> below the belt all right was that wrap up uh Deontay Michigan, Johnson? Yeah, <laughs> let's uh let's get on to the last pick of the second round with the 12th and final pick of the second round of the ff dynasty 2019 ricky mock it up before we mock it up draft Casey Myers is on the clock for the medium dipper. Really going full government. All right. You don't want you to throw my middle in there? I don't know that I know your middle name. <laughs> it's my dad's name. Oh, Stefan? With, with a PH. Yeah. 
Stefan, you want to kiss? You want to throw the social out? <laughs> <laughs> Routing number six nine six nine. <laughs> that's it's the last four. All right, <laughs> who you got at two twelve? <laughs> Uh, is that the correct last four? No. no. <laughs> Come on. It's the last four of my phone number. <laughs> but, it is. Um, 112, I took Daryl Henderson. Uh, you can go on YouTube and find that or listen to the uh, previous podcast. At 212, um, he has James Conner. So I'll sum this up it for basically, well, really, I'm taking Benny Snell because, well, he has James Conner and two... And two, suck it haters, Benny Snell, second round. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. That's it. He said, suck it haters. <laughs> Benny Snell, yeah. We have a one to two star review coming our way in the near future. Nah, if you got James Conner, man. Yeah. Take Benny Snell. Yeah, this is, I mean, Benny Snell got drafted in the fourth round of the actual draft. High, High in the fourth round. Higher yeah. than a lot of people thought. Suck it haters. Early suck it round. haters once again. Mm-hmm. Suck it, Trebek. Steelers get credit for drafting uh, these receivers, but you know they, they don't. They don't. Nobody wants to give them any credit for plucking uh, for the run, RBs, plucking running backs. Yeah, oh, he was the twentieth pick of the. Did a hell round. of a job there. Yeah. So they must have an eye for talent. Le'Veon and Connor, not too yeah. shabby. Jalen Samuels, Samuels did. So work. I mean, Benny comes in there. He's been hated on his whole life, so it's nothing new for him. Snell, yeah. He, he's ready to uh, wake up and smell the roses. If you smell. <laughs> What the smell is cooking, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you smell me, girl. I smell like money. <laughs> I <What's> like better. <laughs> I like what Benny Snell brings to the table. We've been we've been going to bat for Benny. Obviously, you know, he goes. It's a little crowded over there, but I do think out of everything that's going on, they Connor not being able to necessarily be healthy through any of his first NFL seasons. Maybe they work a little bit more of a timeshare in there. Jalen Samuels works in, Snell works in a little bit. Um, so I don't, not that I think Benny Snell will be necessarily startable any week, but I think it's a hell of a pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He fits right into the culture and the persona of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think he's going to come in there with his hard hat and his lunch pail ready to roll and be hard to keep him off the field. Agreed. I like it. And he Excellent. has James Conner. And second round pick, Benny Snell. Yeah. I mean, suck it, haters. <laughs> definitely go back and listen to our rookie breakdown of Benny Snell. You can find that on YouTube or the, the website, the FFDynasty.com. It's a good time. We went to bat pretty hard for Benny. He's, a, he's It's no not like we here. had him ranked number one overall at any point. But no, I mean, we, we, we just wanted to let you know that he was a good player. Yeah. And the Pittsburgh Steelers thought so, too. So many haters out there. Running back you is what we're going to call the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All righty then. Well, that puts a wrap on today's show. Let's get out of here. We did it. All 12 picks in one Let's episode. Let's go over to the real show, The Pleasure Chest, where we bear it all and have a much better time than this show. It's only five bucks. <laughs> yeah. Holler at me. Yeah. Check us Casey out over takes it. his shirt off. <laughs> you can see that. I smash things off my head. You can feel that <laughs> through the mics. Uh, yeah. Hit us up on patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. You can get there from the website, the FF Dynasty.com. Uh, as we were going through these picks today, we were looking at the website pages of rookie players. So go check out, check that out if you're looking to do any research on your own. Game logs, uh, combine stats, links to videos. Video footage. Anything that we've done on the players there for you to see. Hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co., at Jay Wayne's World. Be sure to rate and review well, on whatever platform you're listening on. Definitely let and us get that really five appreciate stars. That. On the iTunes, that'd be so nice. And if you're on YouTube and you made it this far and you're not upset, hit that little thumbs up, subscribe, go up to the notification bar, hit the little bell so that you get notified anytime we put new videos up. We're breaking these shows down and trying to give you a little more granular experience. Boom. It's now you later. So appreciate you listening, everyone. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasty. Dynasty.